Hello everyone, my name is Berta. If you are new, welcome to my channel. Good to have you here. And if you've seen me before, welcome back. Today we are doing a very special video because this video is part of a very big collaboration between more than 10 YouTubers actually. And today, in case you didn't know, is Earth Day. So this collaboration is in honor of our planet Earth. And everyone that is in this collaboration will make something that has to do with nature or, you know, anything like that. So, as I said, more than 10 YouTubers and they're all Anglophone or Francophone. I will leave a playlist with all of their videos for this collaboration in the description. So go check out everyone's video. And I will also post a Google Doc in the description. There we have everyone's links to like YouTube and all the other social media. So if you want to check these people out, watch the playlist and check out the Google document. So before anything else, let me explain the story behind this build because right now you're probably all thinking, what does this have to do with nature and stuff? So I am building a house on, well, it's supposed to look like a mountain, but you know, it's rain tools. I try to make a house on a mountain and in this house live two scientists. The first one is an old man who is a soil scientist. So he researches the effects of pollution and uh, you know, everything has to do with the global warming and stuff on the soil and ecosystems. And there's also his son, who's also a scientist, but he does you know, kind of like the same thing, like a soil scientist, but he studies soil and ecosystems in outer space. So what they have decided to do is they have opened up the top floor of their home and kind of turned it into an education center where they try to educate other sims on the impacts that sims have on the earth and how they can live more sustainably. So that is also what you're seeing. I have this one room with all kinds of alien plants and other alien and space stuff. And then the rest of the top floor will be dedicated to other soil science-y climate stuff. So that's what that's going to be. As you can see, I'm switching back and forth between all kinds of rooms because that's how my mind works. I can't just focus on one room, finish it and go to the next. My mind goes everywhere. So I'm also building everywhere. I hope you don't mind. Anyway, the style I wanted to go to is, you know, this scientist is kind of renowned and he does have a lot of money. So he bought this kind of modern house, but he is a bit old fashioned. So there are hints of old fashionedness in the house, if that makes any sense to you. I hope it does. But um, so there's lots of browns in the living room and the kitchen that's going to be downstairs will be kind of rustic, I think, also with lots of browns and his bedroom too. But then his son is a bit more, you know, modern <laughs> i mean he's younger so he has a younger taste i guess as well so his room is going to be a bit different and you may have seen it already but there's this infinity pool that i made and i personally really love the idea of infinity pools and with the view that this house has over del sol valley i think it is perfect like the view is perfect from the infinity pool so I really like it. I hope you do too. So since I am not really a builder, I don't really know what I was doing. So I don't know what to talk about when it comes to the building as well. So I guess I'm just going to talk about why I joined this collaboration. And maybe it's a bit standard to say that I am a nature enthusiast, but it's true. It's the reason why I joined this uh, I just really love our planet Earth and I'm doing the best I can to care for it. As I mentioned before, I am very passionate about nature and animals. And I just wanted to talk about how that came along. 
I just remember that my parents, especially my mom, they really raised me with the idea that nature and animals are very beautiful and important. We had this, what do you call it, like an annual pass for one of the zoos in the Netherlands. And we used to go there like every time we had like a school holiday or it was a special date so we didn't have to go to school. Sometimes we would go in the weekend and I just loved that place. I loved bringing my camera, taking pictures of the animals and learning about all of the animals. <sighs> I just have very fond memories of going to the zoo a lot when I was younger. I did that until I was like 18, basically because until you're 18 you can get that pass and so afterwards we stopped going as often but I went there very often and my dream was also to be a vet. I unfortunately gave up on that dream when I was in high school because you know mental health took a toll on me in some aspects and I just didn't believe I could do it so I gave up on that dream which is a pity but I do not regret doing what I'm doing now it's just it would have been nice to be a vet anyways um, what I also really like doing is camping we used to go camping like in many places in Europe like we've been to Belgium France Italy Slovakia uh, Czech Republic, Poland, we've been to many places and we would always go camping and we would go climb mountains, you know, go hiking, learn about the culture. We were really like nature people when it comes to our vacations. So yeah, I just really enjoyed sleeping and living in my small tent and waking up in the midst of nature every day when we were on vacation and I also remember that my mom used to take us to forests sometimes uh, there's a forest very nearby our house well the house I grew up in um, and we would go there quite often and there was also a bigger forest that I really loved for some reason <laughs> that we went to sometimes and we had these kinds of search charts i don't know the names but they are like booklets or sheets of paper that help you determine what kind of plant or animal or whatever you're looking at by looking at the features of the plant or bird or whatever so i really love doing that and i was also a member of the scouts which of course is also it's about other things as well, but it is also a lot about nature and caring for nature and respecting nature, basically. That's, I think, the most important thing that I learned um, during my time with the Scouts, like having respect for other people and having respect for nature. Yes, I think that's, that's what I learned. And there was also this thing, I think I was, about 10 years old um, in school we had this program that for three days we would go to a forest it wasn't very nearby but a forest and uh, you would be sorted in a group with some other kids of course and one mentor and the four groups were like the four elements and I was sorted in the element earth which was really nice because that is also my personal element and I remember we had to choose a new name for ourselves which was an animal so I chose fox uh, in Dutch by the way is vos so my name those three days was vos and we had to make a t-shirt with um, our animal on it and we would just go into the woods for three days and learn everything that we could about nature and I remember loving it it was so much fun and one thing I remember really well is that my mentor like the mentor of the group earth 
was, um, his name was Buzzard, by the way. But he was a very old man and he was wearing like, he had, he had a long beard and he was wearing robes and he looked a bit like a wizard. <laughs> when I think about it now, he looks like a wizard. And, but he was walking barefoot all the time. So I remember that one person in my group at some point was asking like, sir, why don't you wear shoes? And he just asked us, why do you wear shoes? And we were like, yeah, why do we actually wear shoes? <laughs> I don't know, that just stuck with me, like thinking about why do we wear shoes in nature? I mean, of course, it makes sense to, to me why we wear shoes, but I don't know, that question made me think when I was a 10 year old little kid. <laughs> and also when my parents were married for like, they had their, was it 25th anniversary? Apparently, usually people give like a big party, but my parents, just like me, aren't very keen on parties. So instead of throwing a big party, they decided to go to South Africa with me and my brother, which was amazing. And, you know, I have always had this of course, I had this love for nature and animals, but I had this specific passion for African wildlife and nature. So that trip really impacted me a lot. And I have always thought by myself, one day I would like to go back and do something. And I mean, do something for nature, you know, help, help out. So. That's what I did, is it two years ago? It's one and a half years ago. <laughs> I went to South Africa for two months on my own. And for one month, I joined a conservation program. So I was in a reserve, in a game reserve for basically three weeks. Was it three? Three or four weeks. And in a group of 10 people, we would just go out into the reserve every every weekday and we would do lots of things. For example, we would um, collect data for universities so they could um, research, like for example, uh, behavior of the rhinos and we documented what the elephants were eating and how much and we also followed the lions to see how they migrated through the reserve and one day we also what what is the word for that i i don't know the word but we went bird spotting i guess and we would note down which bird we saw and if we thought they they were breeding at the moment or getting ready to breed or not breeding. And what else did we do? We did like every day. We also did something like maintenance to the game reserve. So we would get rid of plants that didn't belong there. And we would also plant new plants that were good for the environment, for that environment. And of course, we also did some fun things like we did a night drive. So, you know, going out in the reserve during the night, we saw some hippos, which was really awesome. And we went to this place where the, we, co we called it paradise. There was this very big cliff that you could jump on off into the water and you could just swim around in the in the midst of palm trees and we also went camping there for one night and and we went uh, canoeing on the river and really i just felt so in touch with nature and it really was the one of the best experiences i have ever had in my life i mean i was literally living in the bush for a month and surrounded by nature and animals all the time and when i mean surrounded by animals i literally mean like lions 
like two meters, three meters away from you. And there was this one instant that we were watching some uh, elephants, they were drinking. And it was like a two female, uh, two female elephants and a few, what do you call them? Cubs? Small elephants, <laughs> baby elephants, which was super cute. And then at some point they were done with drinking and they were going to leave, but they were going to leave walking past our vehicle and I was sitting on the side and this one elephant came up to us to like sniff with its trunk to see, to just investigate. And he was like centimeters away from me. And I was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. <sighs> like, you know, you see, I'm, I'm speechless. It was, it was amazing the time I had there. And the month after that, I did travel around through the southern part of South Africa. So I did lots of hikes. And one of the hikes that I enjoyed the most, in case anyone was going is going there and wants to do some beautiful hikes, I really like the one on the Robert Nature Reserve. Uh, it was like I did a four or five hour hike and it was beautiful. And I one of the things I really enjoyed too was something I did in Cape Town. I went swimming with seals, like not in a pool or something, but you know, literally in, in the bay, in the sea, we would go and find seals and swim with them, which was really beautiful and i did a shark dive is that what you call it to see sharks which was really cool i didn't see a great white because apparently they were like chased away by um killer whales so um there weren't any white sharks unfortunately but i did see a few other sharks and they were super close and there was this uh was it a manta ray? Like a huge ray that came up to us when we were in that, what would you call it, enclosure in the sea. It just came up to us and was like, no, who are you? <laughs> and it was so beautiful. I'm just rambling. I know I'm just rambling, but those are very fond memories that I have of me and nature and it explains why i care i guess i also went to climb on lion's head in cape town during sunset um in a group of course because otherwise it, it's dangerous but um that was beautiful and one thing I, that i really like about cape town because cape town i find is a bit of a scary intimidating city sometimes but one thing I really love about Cape Town is the fact that there's this busy, huge city and right next to it, there's mountain and serene mountains and serene nature. And that was very interesting to me for some reason. I also went paragliding from those mountains, which I really loved. And I did a bungee jump, you guys. I am one of those adrenaline seekers. So I really like roller coasters, roller coasters and stuff. And one thing that has been on my bucket list for years is doing a bungee jump. And so I decided to do that in South Africa because in South Africa, there is the highest bungee jump from a bridge. It's like 216 meters. And it is like the third highest bungee jump in the world. And the biggest one is just a few meters higher. So I basically jumped off one of the highest bungee jumps in the world. And it was insane, but it was amazing. And you know, it's weird to think that I could enjoy the nature surrounding me while I was falling off a bridge, but I did actually do that. I was just, you know, after you jump, you're just, hanging there for a while before you you get 
brought up again. And I was just upside down enjoying the mountains and the views. <laughs> and um, it was beautiful. So yeah, those two months in South Africa were like the best two months of my life. And I learned so much about nature and I was so in touch with nature. <sighs> it was amazing. But you know, I when I started doing this voiceover, I was so nervous that I wasn't going to be able to fill up such a long voiceover. But I mean... It's not like we're almost at the end, but we're at like 20 minutes and I'm still talking. Like, that's crazy to me. I didn't think I could do it. So <laughs> long voiceovers. Yay. Anyway, I would like to know what your experiences, like good experiences or memories are that you have that are linked to nature or animals or you get what I mean. Anyways, now that we have finished story time with Berta, I want to ask you, how are you doing? I really hope you are all doing fine. It can be difficult these times, I know. So I really hope you're taking care of yourself and that you're feeling all right. I personally am fine. I've been working and I've been working on videos and the sun is starting to shine again here. And I'm so much enjoying that, even though I can only go outside for a few minutes to take a walk. I really enjoy feeling the sun on my skin after such a long time. You know, last year I kind of avoided the worst months of winter by going to South Africa in November and December and having the most amazing weather over there. I remember like when this autumn winter started, I had to get used to the cold so bad because I hadn't experienced the cold in literally more than a year. So <laughs> that was uh, interesting. Now that we're working on this room, I am going to place down all these crystals that the scientists apparently found in the ground, I assume. And I'll also place a television with sofas and I imagine that people come there, maybe kids, and the the scientists will give like presentations on the television to educate the other sims about nature and environment. But yeah. So we are getting near to the screenshot, so I'm gonna wrap this video up here. It was a long one. If you've made it till here, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you want to download this build, it is going to be on the gallery. You can find it by searching for my origin ID, which is Simmingbird, as well as looking for the hashtag Simmingbird. And if you're going to place this, don't forget to turn on the bb.moveobjects cheat, because if you won't do that, like so many things are going to be misplaced. So don't forget to do that before placing the lot. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone who might like it. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like my content, please consider doing so. It would mean a lot to me. And as I said, I would really, really like to know your stories, experiences, uh, everything that has to do with nature and what nature means to you. Please go leave a comment and let's talk about it because nature is beautiful and we should all appreciate it and care for it. Um, so yeah, that's the end. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye.